today, Sunday, August the 16th, halfway through August already. I uh, hope you're having a lovely holiday, whatever you're doing, whether you've been away or whether you're at home at the moment. I don't know if anybody's had any birthdays. When we have family services again, we're going to have so many chocolates to be given out, aren't we? All these months of birthdays. And I wonder how you manage with the hot weather. It got very hot at times, didn't it? If you had a big paddling pool or a swimming pool, that would have helped, wouldn't it? I guess it's probably linked to climate change, isn't it? And I am just so impressed with children and young, young people around the world because you have led the challenge to us older people to actually start to face climate change. I was just reading this week that Greta Thunberg has used some of her prize money to send to Mauritius to help with cleaning up that awful oil slick which is killing so many of the maritime animals around there. So well done children, keep going. Whatever the weather, whether it's hot or cold, just keep on reminding us about climate change and you do what you can to help us to, uh, to start to make things better again in life. Okay, well, whatever it is with you, whether you're hot or cold, whether you're on holiday or not, whether you've had your breakfast yet or you haven't, today is Discoverers Online. Yay! Brilliant. Great to see you back again. Well, last week, that well, two weeks ago actually, we exercised our bodies, you brilliantly, me rather pathetically. We've got amazing bodies. We have absolutely amazing bodies. The way that we're made so that everything works together. So we have to look after our physical bodies, we have to look after our mental health, how we feel about things, our emotions, and we have to look after our brains, which are the most important part of our bodies for helping us to, to keep growing and developing. So today, we're going to exercise our brains with a bit of a quiz, a bit of a fun quiz. See how you go. I'm going to ask a question, be quiet for just a little while for you to think of the answer, then I'll give you the answer. You can write it down if you want, or just tell it to other people around you. Are you ready? 11 questions. Question one, who built the pyramids? Oh, it wasn't the Germans, no, it must have been the English. No, it was the Egyptians, well done. Question two, in the nursery rhyme, who sat on the wall before having a great fall. Now, if you're very young, you may well remember this if you're getting older. Might be a bit more tricky. Yes, it's Humpty Dumpty. On a farm, what is a kid? Mm, do people call you a kid? You say, come on, let's take the kids out. Well, on a farm, of course, it's a baby goat. What's the name of Harry Potter's pet owl? Oh, my grandchildren will know this immediately. I'm not sure about Bill. Does he remember who it is, Bill? Do you know who it is? No. He doesn't know. It's Hedwig. Of course it is. Oh, now, I don't know how many of you will know about the Smurfs. What colour are Smurfs? McDonald's used to give them away free with uh, children's meals. They're blue. What is Batman's crime-fighting partner called? What was the name of Batman's crime-fighting partner? Not Batgirl, no. Yep, it's Robin. How many sides does a triangle have? Ooh, bit easy. Three. Which superhero can climb up walls and buildings? And Bill dressed up once as this superhero and went to college to teach students. It was a special day, charity day. Yep, Spider-Man. The Stars and Stripes is the nickname of the flag of what country? Now, we don't have stars or stripes, do we? We have crosses. Diagonals and... Yep. The United States of America. Which planet in our solar system is known for having a ring? Yeah, I've got a ring. Which one is it? Mars? Jupiter? No. 
it's Saturn. Well done, you got that right. And why do things fall when you drop them? No, not because you push them off the table. Yep, you're right, it's gravity. Yes, it's because of gravity that they fall. So, a few things to get our brains going. And I know that your brains are working really well because your children, <clears throat> children have amazing brains and you're learning new things every day and your brains are developing and, and growing new, not growing bigger, but growing new pathways so that you get more and more complicated, complex things going on in your heads. Amazing. Well, why are we focusing on children today? We're still in our uh, theme of um, kings and queens in the Bible. And the reason why we're thinking about children is because we're going to think about a king called King Josiah. Now, in Israel, there had been a succession of bad kings. We had King David, we talked about him. We had King Solomon, another good king, we talked about him. But then they got worse and worse and worse and worse as new kings came. They hadn't ruled well, they hadn't looked after their people well, and eventually a king called King Amon became king. And he was only 22, so he was quite young. So maybe everybody thought, this king will be a good king. But he was worse than the rest. He was a terrible king. In fact, he was so terrible that the people said, we've had enough. We've been treated badly for years and years and years. This king is terrible. And they did a terrible thing to him. They killed him. They just had enough. Well, even though King Amon was still quite young, he had a son, and his son was called Josiah. Now, Josiah was just eight years old, and the people said, Josiah will be our king. That is quite incredible, isn't it? Imagine that. Eight years old, if you're eight already, or you've been eight, or you're coming up to eight, imagine being eight years old, and being the king or the queen of this country. I wonder what you would do. What changes would you choose to make? That might be something to think about and to talk about when you have lunch together as a family. What would you do that would make this place a better place? I suspect King Josiah, young as he was, was having those thoughts. What can I do to make this place happier? The people are unhappy. They're so unhappy that they killed my dad. What can I do to make this place a better place? Well, I suspect he remembered King David. He would have known about him. He'd have heard stories about him. King David, he knew, had been a good king, a wise king, a caring king. And we know, and he would have known, that King David followed God and asked for God's help. Remember as a shepherd, when he managed to look after those sheep on his own as a young boy? Remember, still young, when he went to fight Goliath, just a young person, just with five stones, he managed to kill Goliath, and so his country won that war. So I suspect Josiah thought, David trusted God, Solomon trusted God, I will trust God. And he became increasingly a good king. Now, when he was 26 years old, so that's after he'd been a king for 18 years, quite a long time, he'd found his feet, knew what he was doing, he decided this was time now to repair the temple, the Jewish cathedral. It had got into a terrible state bits were falling down, it needed a lot of work doing. So he got together the very best builders, plumbers, architects, stonemasons, carpenters, and all the workers that he could get who were really good and said, we will pay you, but please would you repair the temple and make it wonderful again. Remember Solomon built that temple, didn't he? We heard about that uh, two weeks ago. Oh, no, four weeks ago, I think. Anyway, um, so they started to repair the temple. Now, there was a, a priest called uh, 
Hilkiah in the temple, overseeing the work as it was going on, making sure that it was going well. And he found this book. And when he looked at this book that was all dusty, he realised it was part of the Jewish Bible, the Torah. And so he took it to the king. Now the king asked Shaphan, the person who could read well, to read it to him. And as Shaphan read the Torah, that bit that they had found, to King Josiah, King Josiah started to cry, started to weep. He realised how much they had all abandoned the ways that God had shown them to live. So no wonder the people were so unhappy. No wonder the place was a mess, because they weren't living the way that they could live so much better. So he said, we will have a big, like a service, where I will make a promise to God, a promise that we will all keep. And he said, we are going to change the way we live. We are going to stop living how we have lived. And we are going to change and live the way that God has guided us and advised us to live. From now on, we will listen to God, we will trust God, and we will do as God suggests. We will love God, we will love other people, and we will care for our world. Gosh, that was quite amazing, wasn't it? Quite amazing for a young person to have been so wise. Or is it so amazing? I don't think it is. Because what can we learn from Josiah? Something that I really believe in. That you are never too young to do good things and to make a difference in the world. That children have so many good ideas. Children are wise. Children understand how things work in the world. And you, like Josiah, can really decide, I'm going to love God, love other people, care for this world, and I'm going to make a difference. And you probably are already. So as children, you can listen to God. You can know that God is part of all of who we are. And that this light shines a light inside us that we don't see, but when we're with other people, they see that special something, that light shining within us to bring hope to other people. Now for the adults, if there are adults listening too, there is something we can learn. We can learn that we need to listen very carefully to children because they've got so much to teach us about life and about their world and how they see their world. And children speak. I read a poem once from Italy with more than a hundred languages, and I believe that. Children speak not just through words. That's only a little bit of how they speak to us. They speak through their art, through their dancing, through their music, through their physical activity, through their actions, through their body language, through their interests, through their dreams. So many different ways. And we need to learn how to listen to those and actually respond to them. Children can make a difference and they will and they have this light. So before we go on to our song, which is all about light, we're going to do an activity. It's been very hot this week for quite a while, so we're going to make a fan. Now, I'm quite proud of this fan because it took me quite a while to work out how on earth to do it. It does keep quite cool like this. I've done it with three different colours to show you how it's done. So you can use three different colours. You can use white and, and do patterns on it first. You can use wrapping paper, whatever you want to make, uh, to make your fan. Then you hold it that way and you're going to start folding about that much. Fold it 
that way, then turn the paper over and fold it the other way. Okay? And then turn the paper over and fold it again. Okay? So it's like a concertina. So by the end, you'll have something a bit like this. Okay? Got to do that. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to fold it in half. So you fold it in half like that and really squeeze down that end there. Okay? And you're going to make three of those. So I made blue, white and pink just to show you. And then what you're going to do is, and I've done two white ones here, you then take this bit here in the middle and you get your PVA glue and a glue stick and you put glue across there, glue up there and you stick it down so that it sticks together, okay? So that it makes one bigger fan. Then you make your next one. So you make one, you then make another one, two, you then make a third one, three, okay? And then you're going to put glue up there and glue up there and stick those two bits together. Now what I did to make them stick really well, actually double sided sellotape would have worked better. This is the right way to do it. I used one of these clips just to hold it in place, to hold it firm, while I made the third one. So you then make the third one, okay? And when you've made your third one, you stick it onto that. So that you end up with three, like that, okay? You then need to have two lollipop sticks. So you might need to ask if you can have a lolly over the next day or so. And you stick your lollipop stick onto that side of the fan and onto that side of the fan. And again, what I did was squeeze it all in like that to hold it together. And actually, I held that in overnight because I was worried that by this morning, it wouldn't work. Okay, and then you can open it up. The longer the lollipop sticks, the better, really. However, of course, if you can't be bothered to do it quite like that, you could just make a very simple fan like this and have a go. It's been hot, so I thought a fan might keep us cool. But also, I suspect that King Josiah, living as he did in Israel, it would have been very hot. And I suspect some of his servants were standing by him, fanning him. Okay, now do you remember, King Josiah made a choice to trust God, okay? And that light within him really shone out and made a difference to all the people living in that land because life changed for them and got better because of the changes that Josiah made. So we're now going to sing a song about this little light of mine. I think you know it. I think if you go to Chillingstone Primary School, you sing it there. First verse, we're just going to sing this little, little light of mine. Then we're going to sing, let it shine for the chidding stones, so that everybody around you where you live can see, oh, this person really loves and cares for the people around them and for the, the world around them. Oh, I wonder what's special. I wonder what's different. And then we're going to sing a tough one. Let it shine for the family. It's often harder to be nicer to the people who are closest to, isn't it? So we're going to try and have a go at that. Okay? So. Listen a lot. Stones. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine for the 
because somebody important to them has died. I want to pray for people who are on holiday because I want to pray that they keep safe on holiday. And I want to pray for all the children and young people in the Chiddingstone area that if they're getting results for A-levels or GCSEs or if they're preparing to go to a new school that they will be able to feel peaceful Okay, so those are my five prayers, and you can think about what your five prayers would be. Well, it's a five-week month in August, and we are going to have um, Discoverers Online in two weeks' time. That's the last Sunday of August, because we're going to change the pattern a bit, because we're hoping, really hoping, that the family service will be able to start in September. So that will be the first Sunday of the month. So we'll have... Discoverers Online on the second and the fourth Sunday of the month. And the third of the Sunday of the month? Well, I wonder what you'll do with that one. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you last Sunday of August. Have a lovely week. See you soon. Bye.